so we have the engine together, and last episode, we put it into the car. But the work to get this thing running is just starting. First up, let's try to do something about that crusty radiator. Yeah, I, I don't even know where to begin with this thing. We left radiator flush in it for a while while it was out of the car. We need all the cleaning help we can get here. It uh, is still gonna need some more work. Kinda scary. We ran lots of water through it every which way and got out as much as we could. We got all sorts of mineral buildups and ooze out of the radiator. It's as good as we can get it and it's going to have to do. We got these two 12 inch radiator fans and they don't quite fit on the back but they will just fairly fit on the other side of the radiator. So we're gonna try to use them as push fans and just see how it goes. Okay, how about this fuel cell? We already know, it could use some cleaning too. All these fittings, finger tight. That's encouraging. Just like the radiator, we keep flushing it out with water. Last episode, we got a real close-up look at how bad those engine and transmission mounts were. Okay, let's try to get those engine mounts back out. We'll jack up the engine just a bit and should be able to slide them right out. Only thing is, once we do, we notice some problems. This is the new mount, the new dowel isn't exactly straight. But hold on. No, no that's all wrong. That dowel is not even in the right place. It doesn't match up at all and this cannot be installed. Then how about the threads in it? Um, if you really could call them that. So, take a tap clean up those threads, kind of really just making threads. Just had to cut that dowel off. It probably really only matters for assembly, but uh, I'm still not too happy about having to do that to these parts. You do get what you pay for sometimes. Getting this B roll and me trying to put in the screw when it's not actually going in. After wasting all that time making those mounts fit, at least now the engine is securely mounted. Next up, we're going to jack up the front and change some wheel studs. Or finding the car looks better if you just don't look too closely at it. Oh god, the tire is so flat! Yeah. So we need new lug studs because there's a couple problems here. In order to keep these wheels, they need the proper lug nuts. There it is. As far as we could find, nobody makes those for this car. The 280Z uses M12 by one and a quarter millimeter lug studs. These mag wheels use special shank lug nuts, and as far as we could find, they don't exist for that thread pattern. So we're replacing them with M12 by one and a half millimeter studs and getting a whole new set of expensive lug nuts. Lug nut. When we rolled the car outside after doing the engine swap, this front wheel almost fell off. The lug nuts are a horror show. There was almost nothing holding those wheels on. This is a half inch lug nut. I'm impressed that it even remotely threaded on. Unfortunately, getting these front lug studs out is gonna take some work. And look at this brake line. It's a hard line to the hose, back to the hard line. That looks like a pain. 
So we're going to start with changing the rear studs. I'm pretty sure that's RTV on the brake shoe. As is often the case on these old cars, getting the drums off eh, took a while. These drums are aluminum, so we were hesitant to really start beating on them. But, we got them off. We're using the screwdrivers to dampen some of the impact force on that hub bearing, but there's only so much you can do. You should try to clean up some of that dust before hammering on drum brakes though. It's not the best uh, breathing environment. The studs came out pretty easy. Old studs out, new studs slide right in. To pull them in nice and tight, we're using these washers and spare lug nuts. We actually have a stud install tool, but it didn't fit on these hubs. Right. Die. But an impact gun and a lug nut will do just fine. Line everything back up and slide the drum back on. So we get the wheels back on and can finally tighten them up. Oh. <laughs> Heavy. <laughs> Now for the fronts. Yep. <laughs> Impact. We went to take the caliper pins out, and the retention clips were missing, so there's nothing holding the pins in. We ordered some clips, and we're going to get back to that later. Same idea to get these studs out, brace the hub and hammer them through. Some of these came out maybe concerningly easy. Uh, the new ones should be plenty tight though. The brake line is really fiddly, but eventually we got the caliper off and the axle nut loose so we can finally take the hub and rotor off. Out come the bolts holding the hub to the rotor. The new studs are slid into the hub and the rotor is reattached. We'll repack the bearings while we're in there and grease everything up. We'll reinstall the hub and rotor, set preload, and get everything just right. The stud installer doesn't fit in the front either, so we install the front studs in the same way as the rears. We 
get the wheel back on, the expensive lug nuts installed, and all that's left is the other side. It'll take some time, but eventually we have all the studs replaced, and now the wheels are finally secure. That is, until we find more loose bolts. We tighten those up and find that the ball joints also need replacing. <sighs> we'll have to deal with that later. Next up, we're going to take out the pieces of the old transmission mount and put in one that actually holds the transmission in place. You see why I thought this mount was unacceptable? We've come a long way towards making this car run and drive again, but jeez, there's still so much work left to do. A lot of lines left to hook up, a lot of wires to run, and a lot of bolts to tighten. But we're finally getting close to starting this thing on six cylinders for the first time. Seriously guys, next video, we will start this engine. You guys created this. <laughs> Don't blame this on us. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> Freaks out when he goes further into it. See? <laughs> it's just more creatures for the radiator. If I just make the sound, it sounds like a radiator. You got the sound designer? Yeah, he just sits there with the ratchet. Oh, shit, it's too long. <laughs> Ask for the thing in. <laughs> there you go. <laughs>